girl Nicole and we are back with another video. I'm so excited to be bringing you this video today. It's going to be real cute, okay? Because we are going to be doing a q and A. I'm going to be telling you a little bit more about myself, um, especially since I'm new to YouTube. You need to know who you're following, okay? We don't do strangers around here. And I know you're stuck in the house with coronavirus. I mean, I'm about to be stuck in the house for two weeks too with my son. RIP to me but I know you're stuck in the house why not get to know your girl a little bit better outside of the beauty and the fashion that I'm probably we go ahead and start let's go ahead and hit that subscribe button down at the bottom I would love to get to 50 subscribers by the end of the month and I can't do that without you guys so if you're watching this video and you see my past videos please make sure you subscribe to my channel also make sure you like and comment this video I would love to know more about you especially if you're watching like leave a hey at the bottom hey girl hey if you're in dc or maryland leave a um leave a little hey at the bottom too i would love to connect with you guys and also follow me on instagram my instagram name is nicole jack n-e-c-o-l-e it's how you spell my name um but make sure you follow me on there too i would love to connect with you guys i am all about you know connecting with my people all right guys, so let's go ahead and get into this video. I'm sort of not ready, but I'm ready. But I'm honestly just excited for you guys to get to know me a little bit better outside of the fashion and the beauty. I made a goal this year to kind of open myself more up, especially to new people. And I guess like the YouTube is the way I'm doing it. I, I, I guess this is how we're doing it. So I put out um, a post on Instagram on my story just asking people to ask me some questions to get to know me anything confidential feel free to ask me whatever because you know clearly my life may be juicy for some of you guys and you're you're wanting to know that but um just to shoot me any questions that I can answer on this video but okay let's go ahead and get into this I got my iPad right here and we're gonna go ahead and I'll answer your questions First of all, I already see little spam pages. Spam pages, they are so bold. They be commenting on the, on the polls. They be doing everything. It's like, just be a discreet spam page and, and stay out of my page. Like, just stay out of my stories. Like, spam pages are annoying. All right, y'all, so let's get right into these questions. The first one is already crazy. <laughs> Would you ever get plastic surgery? And honestly, I if the opportunity arose, I would get plastic surgery, but it would be limits on the plastic surgery. Um, the only thing I would get is like a tummy tuck because as some of y'all know, I have a five-year-old son. And before I gave birth to him, I was like 130. And when I gave birth to him, I was 200 pounds, okay? So your girl was heavy as hell, okay? <laughs> And honestly, I would just get a tummy tuck just to flatten it. At this point, like, I've lost so much weight. I'm back down to, I'm probably at my healthiest before I've had my son. So, I probably, they probably would tell me that I wouldn't even need liposuction. Like, I would just get a straight up a tummy tuck because ain't no fat there. Um, honestly, truly, like, it's just lab skin that is just there. So, that's the only plastic surgery I would get. I probably, I wouldn't want to get like a fat ass because I'm a runner and I would want my body to be proportionate with how I run. It's just, I think a fat ass is just not that important to me. Um, I like my beautiful butt and clearly other people have loved it too. So we gonna stick with what God bless me in that area. But I would just kind of like tone and tighten, you know, what I got, you know, before pregnancy. How do you get your skin so clear and even? All right, so when I started running two years ago, my skin broke out something serious. And mind you, I have always had good skin. Like I've always gotten compliments on my skin. I rarely had breakouts. Like even when I started working in a department store, the makeup artist, the first thing they said to me when I was introduced was, wow, your skin is amazing. Thank you. And I wasn't even in makeup at that point. So I didn't even know like how, bomb my skin was but about a couple of years ago my skin just went crazy and it was just nothing was working I didn't know what was going on like bruh did I hit puberty and I didn't know like is this puberty for me like my face was just you know, my face was just breaking out all on my cheeks every single place and at that time I was using a Clarisonic um 
I started talking to a makeup artist who's centered in like natural beauty and she explained to me how clarisonics can actually be dangerous for you if you're trying to clear your skin so I immediately stopped using it um, and then this um, a girl that I went to college with curly head killer shout out to you uh, curly hair curly hair I think I said her name right but um, I somehow well, like we follow each other on Instagram and somehow she mentioned this um, skincare company called acne.org and she mentioned how amazing and life-changing it was for her skin and at that time I was just open to anything I needed anything so I ordered the packet and it came with a cleanser a moisturizer it came with um, AHA um, which helps with the dark spots and then it came with a um, like a, a like a medical like a treatment cream and when I tell you and and also let me put a disclaimer to you there's steps that you have to follow and I followed those steps to a T and when I tell you within a month my skin was flawless it was so flaw like like flawless and I've been using that ever since this day so I mean I have the occasional hormonal breakouts because I'm still trying to figure out my body in that aspect but acne.org I don't know who created it but sis you will forever have a customer through me because that like the most like my skin has benefited so much and then from there I've added you know just um I've added serums to my routine and I'm gonna do a video with that later on but my serums are like undefeated and it's serums that I know people don't use so I'm going to do a video on that but just with the skincare and the serums and then my foundation routine which I'm going to shamelessly plug right here like all of that put together and then the water that I drink all the time you know through working out always working out and you know just maintaining my skin always washing my hands like all of those factors come into play with having good clear skin um, and e even eating right like I have my bad eating days and I notice I'll get breakouts just even with that um, so all of those factors come into play with keeping your skin clear and clean like even like wipe your phone there I know people do not wipe their phones down um, their cell phones down but you gotta wipe those down like all those hands and dirt on your hands like that's on your face I tell people all the time wipe your phone wash your hands wipe your phone wash your hands before you before every step that I do in my skincare routine I wash my hands in routine so I cleanse wash my hands I I moisturize wash my hands I'm about to do makeup I wash my hands like I'm so religious with washing my hands because um, acne.org just preaches that that's how you maintain that clear and you get your skin to its best um, to its best abilities so that is how honestly I maintain my clear skin. It's just a good regimen, serums, washing my hands, and good foundation routine too. And as you see, my my skin just looks flawless. And you know, I do still have dark spots. I still have breakouts. I have problems, but I take it one day at a time. And you know, I I adequately cover up what I can, and I'm making sure that I'm doing the downtime before I do my makeup. Like you gotta make sure that when you're putting on makeup, you're adequately doing your face and skincare the way you're supposed to too, so that when you do your makeup, it's like just a thousand percent flawless. So that's my skincare. The next question. Who is your personal style influence and what are your top three brands? So my personal style influence, um, I would say centers around three people. Um, and that's Alayli May, Brianna, and Shiona Turini. Um, Alayli May, if you follow her, she is like a big streetwear, um, streetwear person right now influence i want to say she's an influencer because she's so much more than that she's one of the only people that uh, only women that's had a jordan collaboration um she to me is that masculine feminine everyday comfort plus edgy and and fire she she it literally embodies the the style that i want to become like especially that she can just add that femininity with a nice boot or a jacket or just take it all the way masculine with some baggy cargos or some jordans or some uh you know some air force ones or something like she literally embodies everything that i hope my fashion to become like comfort but then fire okay comfort fire and flawless that's what 
I would want. And Shiona, she, um, if you don't know her, she is big in the fashion spectrum. Um, she actually just did wardrobe for Clean and Slim. If you uh, follow uh, her on Instagram, you'll see a lot of her pics from that. But she is amazing with her, the way she mixes just her personal style. And also when I keep up with high designer, she's the person that I look to. I love the way she wears her crop top. She's like crop top queen and she wears it with long skirts. Like I love the way she pairs the colors together. She's from Bermuda. Um, but she she honestly is amazing. And Rihanna, enough said, I don't even need to say like her style because that's unmatched at this point. So for me, those are the top three influences that I see my personal style being. And my favorite three brands, of course, are Kith. Um, if you know me, you know I love Kith. Um, my second favorite brand has to be Zara because it's just a fast fashion place that I can nail that look off the runway. And then for high designer, I would say Saint Laurent because they are a mix between masculine and feminine. And um, they're definitely my style of person that I want to. But I would have to say my fourth one up right now is Christian Dior. Like they are really stepping up their quality, their game. I love them because they are like a Parisian, very feminine side to me. And for the days that I do want to be girly, I want to be like in Paris, like Carrie Bradshaw with my cute skirts and my Lady Dior. So, but those are my top three brands. And yes, next question. All right, so what are my favorite pair of jeans? So I have a couple of favorite pair of jeans. I would have to say if I'm going for a boyfriend route, I love Gap jeans for boyfriend jeans. I don't know if people still shop their jeans and I know they're a little bit on the expensive side, but Gap jeans are undefeated in boyfriend wear. They last such a long time and the quality of denim is amazing. I love Gap jeans for that. Um, uh, for high-waisted jeans that I like or even just the dark denim that have kept its wash, Zara is really good at that too. Um, I'm looking to go more expensive in my jeans a little bit because I want to test and see what quality is good. So I'm going to look more into some like Joe's jeans um, and probably shop the Nordstrom route. But I'm very, it's, it's very weird because I only really get my jeans right now from Zara. And if I do boyfriends, I get them from, uh, I get them from Gap. Um, if I want just like a quick pair of pants because I need to just piece the outfit together and I just like need some skinny pants, I'll get them from H&M. But I would discourage getting H&M jeans. They are very cheap to me. They're very thin. They, the black denim, it, it, you just wash it and it turns into that ashy gray, like disgusting. I would encourage you to, if you're gonna get jeans, to, you know, just get Zara jeans, honestly. They're a little bit more expensive, but they're worth it. And if you get it during the seasonal sales, you'll find jeans for like $20, $30, which is amazing for, you know, paying, which is amazing instead of paying that $70 price um, for regular jeans. But I am looking more into like the Joe's route right now for jeans. I'll keep you posted on that. I'm not a Levi's person really, so. I am, you know, looking to expand my wardrobe on that. So we'll see. Will you self quarantine with me? Okay. Um, worst thing about dating in the DMV. Boo child, do you have time? Do you? <laughs> Let me stop. Um, I think the worst thing for me about dating in the DMV is that because I'm born and raised here, everybody is connected. It's the smallest world here. And especially because I'm born and raised here. I went to North Carolina a &T. Our alumni is heavy here. Everyone moves here. And it's just like, you don't, everyone is connected. Like you find one person that knows one person and it's kind of like a little bubble of people just dating people they know. And I, sometimes I just want to be exposed to new people, new backgrounds. And I think that's the hardest thing for me about dating in the DMV. Um, and also because the ratio of like men to women is crazy and men think, oh, you know, since I'm in DC and I'm a young millennial and I'm making this money, I can just mess with any girl that I want to. That's another story. Okay. But dating in the DMV, it's been... It's been tricky. I'm not currently dating at all. So I ain't having none of those problems, okay? And my life has been very, very, very cool since. Um, 
I mean, I think it's like that in any state you live in. That's how it's going to be. Dating is just going to be hard. But it is just different in the DMV because it's just a different culture here. And you have so many young millennials that have so many different options. And so, and you know, and you have so many ladies that are looking to settle down and men that see their options and they're not ready to do that. So it just makes it very messy. Um, so with, that's why I'm currently just not dating at all because I just rather not deal with the mess and focus on myself and I'm gonna, you know, flow, not force me dating someone right now when that person comes around it will and i just encourage you if you're dating here too to do the same thing like let it flow not force and it's taken me a while to get to this point but sis let me tell you it's the most healthiest point to be at what do you look for in a man all right let me take a cup <laughs> let me take some coffee <laughs> before i dive into that okay because sis don't got a list but sis got some prerequisites okay all right, so what do I look for in a man? Um, number one is ambition. I need someone that has equally matched ambition that I have. If you don't have ambition towards where you want to go, or if you're not even trying to figure it out, and you don't have that ambition to take a leap towards it, we will not match. I need someone with ambition. I also need someone, honestly, that keeps that same energy. Like what the number one thing that I'm finding in dating is that people start dating you and the energy is just like amazing and then all of a sudden it just decreases it's like a total 180 like happens and i just need somebody that will always keep the same energy with me and not only that put out the same effort that i put out because I need people to understand with me, that's time that I could be spending working, that's time that I could be spending with my son. So if I'm dating you and I'm putting out that energy, I need for you to match that for me, you know? And I think it's difficult, like if you're dating, if you're dating me, I need you to be okay with dating and I need you to be ready with dating. Like, cause if you're not ready to date, then you shouldn't be jumping or talking or interested in anyone. So let's see that's ambition that's keeping energy and and returning energy and ready to date um i need someone who doesn't lie i mean those are things that i really shouldn't just have to say they should be known i don't need you to lie i don't need you to have a girlfriend <laughs> like like i i don't need no mess no drama i want it to flow not for i think just out of anything i just I really want that connection like connections are so important like I want somebody that I can drunk call at the end <laughs> you know like that's so like seriously let's be serious that's super important like that person you can call when you're drunk and be like can I pull up I miss you like I need to see you like I want someone like that I want someone when I get good news that I can just immediately call and text someone I can sing in the car with and play J. Cole someone that I can just be myself around someone that if I'm in trouble i will call and they will be there for me someone that you know that when i see or when they touch me i really do get those goosebumps or you know someone that i just can't turn away from like they just they they like that attraction is just strong and you know it would just never go away and i need that type of energy when i'm dating someone like if i don't have that connection i know it won't work and like and i always say to like if I can't talk on the phone with you for hours and just talk about anything, I know right off the bat that you're not the person for me. Like if we start talking, I need to be able to talk to you for hours. I need you to tell you anything. I need to just like, even if it's about some like random, weird, whatever. Like I feel like connections like that are really rare and you will never find that. And once you have that, hold on to that. So I pray the next person that I date has that energy and you know has everything that I'm saying I pray you know I'm taking this time to work on me so things that they're praying for their woman about you know I'm hopefully you know obtaining those goals for them but that's just you know a fine black man you know with those prerequisites if you are those and if you are that please call me I am <laughs> Or not, not even call me because I'm not giving out my number. But go ahead and shoot me a DM. Like, this is, I'm, I'm not going to block a blessing if it flows my way. But I'm not going to be actively looking to date. Like I said, I'm not actively looking to date. But I ain't going to block a blessing if you want to shoot it my way. So, 
go ahead and hit those DMs, okay? <laughs> what are you looking for? Well, I just told you, I'm not, and I want, I want to say this again, I'm not looking, okay? I'm not actively dating at all right now. I haven't been dating since like November. Literally nothing. It's been crooked. My phone has been crooked unless you're my friend. But I'm not looking to date at all. I just feel like I'm in this space right now where God is kind of calling me to be by myself, to focus on myself and get myself together. But not only that, um, it's also like a 25% of, you know, I'm just not ready to date. I'm not at that place. I'm not looking for someone new right now. And I don't want to put myself in a position where, you know, that person is ready to date me, but I'm not. So right now i'm just not actively looking at all but again i'm flowing not forcing if something comes my way and it's a good opportunity i will you know take it and i will be happy with it and, and i feel like that's how relationships starts you, you focus on yourself you become your best self like your man is gonna come and, and sweep you up and say sis or not sis but say like you are you are it put a ring on my finger and ultimately that's what i'm looking for like i'm i'm ready for marriage i'm ready for a family i'm not looking to play games and i'm not looking just to date to date like i'm looking for i'm looking to ultimately get to marriage and and right now because i know i'm not ready to get married and i'm not in the space to get married i'm not dating so just is what it is the next career goal so um right now i am a lot of people don't know and i didn't really announce it but within last year um 2019 i left my job at a um i was working at a hair magazine and i left that job and i decided to go back to school and i am pursuing a full-time career in um the computer science world uh, dealing with computers and that is something completely different I know than what I'm currently doing as you see on my Instagram or even just with my writing but honestly I'm just looking for more a stability and two I want stability to where I'm still being a creative and interest as I've been introduced more into technology and how I can be creative in that space there is honestly been so much interest for me and I honestly I honestly love it um, I never see myself really working for the government. I've just honestly been that person where I've always so, uh, saw myself working for like a private business or a small or a startup business and growing with them to become like a massive business. And um, right now, writing is amazing, but I just see myself doing that more on the side. And if that comes to a full time position, I'm definitely open to that. But I'm also looking more into like the tech world. I really am interested and love you know taking my classes and everything that i'm learning um and which is why i launched i launched my website and my blog on the side um because those are things that i can be doing on the side and i'm also doing so many other things right now i'm in another position with a hair company um it's just a lot that i'm doing right now but eventually um I do have a goal of going more towards the tech side, but yeah, I'm really, I'm really just open right now to anywhere God is calling me. And I feel like God is calling me to a position or God has a position for me in these next couple of months that are going to become aware and are going to be my future. And I'm excited for it. And I'm just opening my hands toward it. All right, y'all. So one last question is why don't I show my son on Instagram? All right. Honestly, I have to say, when I was pregnant, when um, with my son, I've always like I didn't even announce that I was pregnant until my baby shower, which was two months until I was due. I was never really that one with telling my business, and I think because when I was in college, my business was so much out there, especially my senior year, that when I graduated, I made it my mission just to like be in my own space, keep my business to myself, and 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 become my own private person and especially when you have a child you really get cautious about things that you say and that you do so when i gave birth to him i wouldn't i, I didn't post him really at all like i started posting him a little bit when he was like a toddler and but it was i wouldn't even show his face really within the last couple of years i was posting him more but 
now that I've started the transition of the YouTube and the, and the website and everything and I'm putting myself more out there, I completely just stopped posting my son. Um, and because, honestly, he's a minor, I don't want, you know, you all are following me, you're not following him, this is not his page. I want him to make that decision if he wants to be on YouTube or not when he's at an appropriate age. Um, I want him to live his life as a child and not be technology driven. Like I, and, and not only that, I don't need to post my stuff for approval, like approval or to show that I'm a good parent or to do any of those aspects. Um, you know, that son, that time that I have with my son is for me. Like, like when I go to the park, I see people, you know, take out their phones and they're showing their son, you know, they're recording their child playing in a park and stuff like that and, and posting on Instagram. And that's cute, but I decided I wanted to be that parent that plays with my son while he's doing that. That's just not taking a picture, but that's actively engaged or, you know, and, or it's like things like I don't understand, like when people, they post like messages, like they post, um, instagram like posts and they'll say like to my son blah 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 who has no instagram this five three years old and they're not gonna read that stuff like you're just posting that for engagement and i'm not gonna post my son to do that you know if i ever post my son it's because i want to do that and because i feel comfortable doing that but I, I've just never been that person. Like, honestly, if I, if, if I have a boyfriend or if I get engaged, like, it will still take me time to even post that too. I've become such a very private person and I, and I wanna be able to share things on my terms. And I think that's really important in my life. Um, so when I'm ready to share my son and I'm ready to, you know, put him on my YouTube or Instagram or whatever, then I would do that. But right now I'm just quite, I'm, I'm not really ready. He's still very young and, you know, I, I want to keep that little piece to myself. Um, oh, wow. Like, and it'd be my friends on here, too, that's doing this. Like, really? When you gonna let me look at your bath water? Okay. Why your head so long? See, I'm gonna start blocking y'all for real. All right, y'all. So that wraps up the questions that I have for my Q&A. Very short and sweet, but I hope you learned a little bit about me and you enjoyed, you know, hearing some keys about your girl. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and also make sure you like and comment below if you agree with anything I said. If you don't agree, let me know how dating is in any city that you're in. Like, I know I can't be the only one that goes through that drama or let me know if you're just taking a dating break too. Like, abstaining, abstinence, girl, we, we, we can make it through together. But make sure you just comment down below. Let me know. Um, also follow me on Instagram and Nicole Jack. And I will be back with another styling video soon. And I will see you later.